Hello and welcome to a GCN strength training session. In this, we're gonna be building that all important leg strength by doing torque intervals. So that's where we're using low cadence work in order to really put some stress on our muscles. Now we're doing it in the beautiful surroundings of the Dolomites and this is the Paso Faltarigo footage courtesy of Mr. Tom Lars. So you know that behind the camera, there is a lot of suffering going on. We're gonna be suffering a reasonable amount, but not too much, not to start with anyway. But this, being a GCN training session, brace yourself, because it is gonna get a little bit grippy. Now at the moment, we're just pedaling nice and easy, the all important warm up. So I'm keeping my gears light, got a nice, easy cadence, not too much resistance. Now, if you have a variable resistance trainer, I'd suggest that you turn up the resistance a little bit. I'm on a Cyclops hammer, so I've got the resistance set to about 4%, so that's the simulation. And that means that I can actually go easy on sections like this, whereas if you have a variable resistance trainer where you can turn it up, crank it right up for the torquing tools, and then take it back down a notch. So that would be my recommendation for it. Okay, so what are we looking at now? This is the bottom of the Faltzara go. We've got 10.6 kilometers ahead of us, at an average gradient of 6.3%. We're already pretty high up, 1,400 meters, and we're gonna end up at 2,117 meters. It's a beautiful climb, really sinuous, twisty, going up through pine forests, and then the last, sections out in the open, way above the snow line as you'll see, are absolutely incredible. 18 hairpins to tick off, and yeah, it's gotta be seen to be believed. Fantastic. Right, let me tell you a bit more about our session then. So, we've got another 50 seconds of just gentle warming up. You can hear I'm a little bit out of breath, partly because I'm talking non-stop, but also because I'm starting to work reasonably hard. At the end of this warm up, we're gonna to go to tempo riding. So tempo will be, for me, probably just one gear harder. So I'm still gonna be able to talk to you, but I'm definitely gonna be working hard. So getting a sweat on, breathing a little bit harder. If you were out on the open road, you'd think you were going quite quickly. It's that kind of tempo, but nothing to overly stress you. Because the real hard work here is when we drop the cadence. And say more about that in just one second. For now though, get ready, Let's take it up one notch. We're gonna go from warming up to tempo. In three, two, one, and here we go. Okay, so another three minutes ahead of us. You can hear the pitch of the trainer has just changed slightly. My power's going up. Breathing a bit deeper. There we go. Still trying to keep a nice, Good quick cadence. So 90 RPMs your target. I'm just a little bit under that, but I'm happy. So there we go. Okay, now let's talk more about all important torque work, shall we? So you've got three lots of five minutes and 60 RPM. And we're gonna be going at higher intensity than we are doing now. Okay, so what about these all important torque intervals then? To begin with, we're gonna be doing five minutes at a time. And the key is to drop your cadence down to about 60 RPM. So one pedal revolution per second. Should be easy to work out. You can get out of a power meter or a cadence sensor. But crucially, we still want to be putting out quite a lot of power. So not, not too much, we're not at threshold. But we're going to be out of breath and we're going to be really feeling like we're pushing through the pedals. So the brilliance of this session is that if you're a little bit tired from a few days riding, you can still get some great hard work in without having to go too deep and really push your heart rate too high. Not to begin with anyway, because after three blocks of five minutes, interspersed with more tempo, 
So no total recovery, just more tempo. We then take it up a notch. So we're gonna be doing one minute of 60 RPM, but we're gonna be doing it at max. I'm sorry. Then we've got two minutes of tempo, then another minute max, tempo, max, tempo, max. And then, believe me, we'll be done. Your legs will probably feel a little bit like jelly, but then that's the point. What we're doing is really stressing the muscles. We want to try and recruit more muscle fibre, so get our legs to be working optimally in a neuromuscular way, so making the most of what we've already got. And then it's the kind of session where if you repeat regularly, then you'll end up in a position where you actually start building new muscle fibre altogether. And that's when you end up with higher powers, both threshold and also down here at lower torque or higher torque rather lower cadence okay all right everyone ready to go here we are our first torque session find your gear might take a bit of experimenting just to make sure you've got your gear right and your cadence right here we go so I'm pretty much there. Then we need to change one gear harder. Right, here we go, 60 RPM. And I'm at the right intensity for me. You'll be able to hear probably in a minute or so, I'm gonna to start to get a little bit out of breath, more than I am doing now. But definitely, feeling composed, at least at the moment. Now there is a tendency when you're doing low cadence work to start rocking all over the bike, trying to use your stomach muscles to push down on the pedals. That's definitely not what we want here. If you can imagine, the perfect look for this is to be rock solid above the hips. So your hips be locked in place by a good core, your arms, Resting loosely on the bars, everything coming from your glutes down through your quads to your calves. Possibly using your hamstrings a little bit, but obviously that is still quite a hot topic. Nevertheless, though, this is definitely a good session if you are interested in trying to change your pedaling technique. Then low cadence work a perfect opportunity because you've actually got time on each pedal revolution to think about how you're doing it. Okay. You can hear my breathing. This is the kind of intensity that we're looking for. Eight out of ten on the effort level. So no problem at all actually getting to the end of each interval. It's the accumulation over the whole session that's gonna be what hurts as opposed to smashing out each interval, hanging on to the bitter end, and then recovering for a couple of minutes. There is no out and out recovery here. It's just all about interspersing low cadence with tempo. Right, how are you feeling then? Have you got your Effort sorted. Just pushing smoothly through those pedals. Trying to keep the upper body relaxed. Try not move too much on the saddle. Try to keep the power appropriate to the level. If you do have a power meter, it is of course always slightly easier to do it. I'm at about 80% of my FTP, my functional threshold power. So eminently sustainable, were it not for the fact that my legs feel like they're working much, much harder. I think over geared work is one of those things that all 
pro cyclists do from time to time, definitely considered to be an effective way of training. The jury's out on going to the gym, because it's not terribly specific. Lifting weights, even though it can help build new muscle fiber and help build those neuromuscular pathways. But when you're sat in the saddle, doing something that you do for you know, hours per week or month, it's very, very specific. Anything you've got to watch out for, like I've just done, is slowing your cadence too much and letting that effort level drop. So just keep an eye on our little cadence ticker there on the, on the screen. Try and match your cadence to that. Right then, nearly the end of our first block. Time to change up through the gears again. We've got three minutes of riding at tempo. 90 RPM is going to feel pretty quick now. But hopefully, it'll feel like a bit of a break. Still need an easier gear. There we go. Okay. Don't let the resistance off completely. This is, of course, tempo, not recovery. So we still want to be going at a nice brisk pace. Long climbs like this Pout Tarago are the perfect place to do it. In the real world, if you go out to a mountainous area, rather than just smashing up every climb, which I'll admit is blooming enjoyable, actually breaking things down and doing some low cadence drills as you're riding up. It feels right, it makes perfect sense because you're mimicking the demands of this session completely. No recovery because we're obviously riding up a climb, but just got really good quality hard work. You definitely feel the benefits of this session out on the open road, that's for sure. I find when I've been doing strength work for a couple of weeks, not every day of course, maybe two sessions a week for two or three weeks, I really feel the benefits when I'm on the bike. It could be little things like accelerating away from traffic lights on my commute, I've just got a little bit more snap, a bit more kick, or indeed just feeling stronger when you get out of the saddle, when you're having to lean on it on climbs a little bit. It's not necessarily linked to our threshold power, so a theoretical power that you can sustain for an hour, but it's definitely good for your head, as well as theoretically being good for your legs as well. So a great double whammy there. And just as well, because we're about to do five more minutes. We've got another 30 seconds of just keeping our cadence up riding at tempo. You can still hear that I'm out of breath. So we're not, we're not recovering. We have still got a bit of resistance through the pedals. Just pedaling a little bit quicker. And then when we're going back to our strength interval, then we need to change down through the gears, lower that cadence, and up the power as well. Right. Trying to find that intensity again. There we go. So that's me changing down. One, two, three, four, five, six gears. So if you can use that as a guide, then that'll be helpful, I'm sure. So my power's gone up by about 30 watts, and cadence has dropped by 30. So although I won't see much difference on my heart rate, definitely feel it in my legs. As I said earlier, 
really good if you've got tired legs. And so you don't want to push on too hard. You just you get the work done. It doesn't tax your brain too much. Just reiterating again as well that it's a great one for really honing your technique. You want to be in the saddle, grinding it out, trying to keep our upper body relaxed. If you'll move a little bit, that's inevitable, but the stiller you can be, the closer to perfect. Breathing rate's gone up a little bit as well. Obviously because I haven't put out more power. I love this bit of climb. Just winding our way up through the woods. catch glimpses of the mountains look straight ahead of us there's huge granite cliffs we've got snow up there and you can see we've got sunshine as well a perfect day for riding the Dolomite and I think it was hard to choose but this way up the Faltarago probably my favourite particularly for those last few kilometers. Ooh. Definitely getting a sweat on now. It's okay, it's socially acceptable indoors and in training. trying to think about using my glutes a little bit more. If you are simulating climbing like I am, and putting a block underneath the front wheel, just to tip the bike up a bit. It sounds stupid, but actually adopting the same kind of body position you would do when climbing, will really help just to mimic the demands. So I always find that when I'm going uphill, I tend to recruit my glutes more. Even if I sit further forward on the saddle, because of the angle of the bike, means that my glutes kick in a bit more. Okay, nearly at the end of block number two. Getting ready to change up through the gears. Remember I've got six to change. Up to my 25 sprocket. Then going from big ring to little ring. It's also a good idea. Woo. Right, lift that leg speed. Whoa. That feels horrible, I'm not gonna lie. Ugh. Okay. I've got a rider in our sights now. Good opportunity to keep that cadence quick. Make it look like we're riding effortlessly up the Feltzara again. Good work lasting. Come on, smashing out. There we go. Right, focus again now. Keep 
that cadence nice and quick. Keep pressing on the pedals. We've got one more five minute block before. I was about to say the fun starts. Depends on your position on fun, I guess. If you're at the masochistic end of the spectrum, like most of us here at GCN, it will qualify as fun. If you like to get your work done in the least stressful way possible, this might be the less good end of the training session. But it's short, it's quick, it's punchy. Definitely feels very different to what we're doing now. You see him taking a good drink. When you're sweating as much as this, super important to turn up your hydration. What you don't want is to be thirsty for the rest of the day. You're waking up, feeling like sleeping in the Sahara Desert. <laughs> I do always find though, I'll let you in a little secret here, the strength drills make me incredibly hungry. Now whether that's for a metabolic reason or psychological, I don't know, but you start craving later in the day, you know why. Blame me. Okay, ready? Change down through the gears. I got six. Straight in, 60 RPM. Much, much easier when you keep a track of the gears that you're in. And not least, if you don't have a power meter, you can keep a track of your progress as well because you come back to this in a few weeks and you find that the previous gear choices no longer stress you enough then you know you've made progress the indoor trainer is a really constant environment as long as you keep things like the resistance fixed if you're lucky enough to have a favorable resistance trainer you know when you're moving forward your power is normally a little bit lower on the trainer inside. Gives the heat and inability to get out of the saddle. But it's always pressed by the same amount each time. So just try and keep the riding conditions the same as well, of course. So if you ride with a fan one day, you need a fan the next day. Otherwise you end up like me. Okay. Three minutes, 20 to go. How's everyone feeling? Can you feel your legs yet? Feel my legs. look like they're coming ever closer, don't they? Fantastic. Keep focused. We're thinking about our cadence first and foremost, and then the repercussions that has on our pedaling technique about applying power evenly, not through the whole stroke of course, but just 
minimize any jabbing at the pedals and the knock on effect that I'll have on the rest of your body. Try and keep your hips nice and stable. If you do any core work, now's the time to lock that in. I'm afraid I let that one slip, which is why you might be seeing me just rocking around a little bit. It's not optimal, my no apologies for that. It's maybe a New Year's resolution, core work. I feel like I'm halfway to Bikram yoga already, getting this sweat on. God, I'm looking forward to just speeding my cadence up a little bit in a minute. These five minute blocks they do take their toll, even though my heart rate's not sky high. Really, is not too intense. My legs feel tired. So just as well, we've got four one-minute maxes. Woohoo! If you're wondering who the architect of such pain could be, please don't look at me. Don't look at poor Rossi either. It's Matt Stevens. Yeah, it's another one of Matt's. Honed over years, battering himself on his turbo, in his garage, in sub-zero temperatures, looking for ever more inventive ways to torture himself. Okay, Woo. it's the end of that one. Find that gear again. Oh. I do find this the hardest bit. Changing cadence again. My legs are for testing of yours. I still don't know how Chris Froome climbs with such a high cadence. Absolutely alien to me. But you can certainly train yourself to pedal faster, become more efficient at it. Whether or not that does you any good or not actually hasn't been proved. But when you look at the best in the world and he's doing it, doesn't really think, isn't it? Right, less yabbering, more drinking. I'm sure you was fresh on the ground that day, even though there's not a cloud in the sky. Just one of the perfect autumn riding days. Something to think about as we're doing this hard work now on the trainer. Think about how much easier it's going to make climbs maybe how much faster we can go. Maybe it's about improving your time in a sporty. Or it's about sticking with the local group ride all the way to the end. Whatever it is, focus on it, because we're now about to do a minute hard. 60 RPM but up the power as much as you can. I'm gonna need a big chain ring now, that's for sure. Ready? Three, two, one, boom, okay. Yeah. 
It's really important to keep that body still. Because now we're really putting out some force through the pedals. I'm trying to keep my arms relaxed, but I don't think I can. I want to really make this count. I'm just going to grip the bars. Remember, this gear choice for two minutes time. We'll go back to tempo in three, two, one. Don't worry, just three more to go. Two minutes. Just try and enjoy this high cadence as long as you can. Oh, my legs feel ruined. Let's put it in some kind of context. The power I was doing was a lot, lot less than if I was doing a one minute max at 100, 110 RPM. Because the limiting factor there is the force I can generate on the pedals, as opposed to the force and the speed with which I can keep the pedals turning. So, if you have got a power meter, don't be worried if it's not as high as you might think. Mine's about, what would it be, 115% of FTP. So, not going to be any, winning any sprints or leaving anyone standing with that, but no denying the work that's being done. It's about the torque. It's about stressing your muscles and it's about doing it without taxing the cardiovascular system quite so much. Really specific work. Okay, back on it again. Remember the gear we're aiming for. Big ring. Couple down. Oh. I'll let my cadence drop a bit too much there. Back on it now though. 60 RPM. Seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Try counting. That helps you find the right cadence. Take your mind off things. If you can count beyond 10, you can manage that. I'm not sure I can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three. Nearly there. Okay. Lift the tempo. Oh, nice fast beat. Well done everyone. Just two more to go. Two more one minutes. Oh. 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 Take time to admire this view. That's incredible. Get some fluid down here. I'm using Science of Sport Go Hydro. They are one of my sponsors on GCN. We're quite fortunate about. No, no carbs in this drink, just electrolytes and a nice bit of flavour. I find drinking plain water when I'm sweating this much just almost doesn't taste right. 
I don't know why, but I do like electrolytes when I'm riding indoors. I don't feel the need for carbs on a short session like this. In fact, unless I was doing some brutal 60 minute threshold session, I wouldn't ever use carbs on the trainer. It's recommended that you probably don't really need them until you're riding for longer than 90 minutes. Okay. Oh man, that two minutes has gone quick. I don't know about you. Just seven seconds to go. Think about getting in your big gear, big ring. I'm gonna try and not let my tempo drop, my cadence drop, power's going up. Ah, I think I need one more. Whoa. Try and keep the upper body still. Twenty seconds to go. Well done, everyone. If you feel like getting bogged down, now's the time. Think about your hamstrings. Just one more after this, remember. Okay, little ring. Keep that cadence high. I have to work for this one. There we go, 90 RPM. Nice one, Wahoo. It's always good when you get the information that you want from your head unit. Just gonna look at the view. Look at that sunshine. Look at that mountain. Oh. Well done, everyone. We're nearly there. Another minute and 10 of tempo. And our last one minute at 60 RPM, giving it the big guns. Like I said, it's not the best way to get power out. So don't go looking for any wattage bazookas. But if you've got a force boost, torque bazooka maybe, now's the time to deploy it. giving you permission to grip the bars just as long as you keep those hips still. You notice I've been in the saddle the whole way. It's not because I wouldn't be out of the saddle in real life, but on the trainer, it feels like the best way to get specific work in. Okay, oh, come on everyone, give me big licks. We've got eight seconds to go. Gonna stick it in the big dog. There we go. Two, one. Okay, here we go. Get that gear turning. Boom, 60 RPM. Hold it, hold it. Oh man, look at that view. It's painful to look at as well. Come on everyone, just 30 seconds to go. Concentrate on the upper body, stop it moving. 22. Ah, nearly there, I'm dying. Ah, ah, ah. One last effort. Oh. Woo. Don't stop pedaling. 
chest opening, chest opening. It's my benefit as well as yours. Oh, well done everyone. That was cracking work. I can sense your effort levels from here. We can now just enjoy the remainder of this climb. We've got two more minutes of cooling down. If you want to stick around just to get to the summit, I suggest you do. I'm going to try and get my breathing under control. Now I need to get out of the saddle. Oh, stretch those legs up a bit. Oh man. Wow. I'm super pleased that you've joined us for this. One of my favorite type of training sessions one of my favourite climbs in the world. You get to the top of this, you can either carry on down to Cortina, from which you can go up the Jow, and goodness knows how many other amazing climbs, or you turn left at the top, and you've got another kilometre or so to climb the Valparola, to the very summit. And from there, you carry your ride down into the Altamedia Valley, where Again, it's like a playground. I might hang out at the top there, try and cool down a bit in the snow. Look at this corner, check it out. Hairpin through a tunnel. Well, everyone, just try and stick it to the end. Your legs should be hurting. My glutes are hurting. But it's what happens when you pack this much hard work into just 43 and a half minutes. There we go, there's your prescribed cool down. Like I said, if you want to see this climb to the end, Keep ticking it over. Looks like Tom Lars is mine the view right now as well. That's off to him. Well, thank you very much for taking part in this one. Do make sure that you subscribe to GCN. We've got loads of free training videos for you to ride along to. Maybe do what I do sometimes. Stick your phone in your back pocket when you're at a hotel gym. You might be able to see the beauty and you can listen to the session. I find that helps a lot as well. Now, make sure you give Matt's session a big thumbs up so everyone else knows how hard and how good it is. And then subscribe to the channel as well. To do that, just click on the globe. That way, you've always been the right place for more training videos. And then, if you want a sneak peek of a couple more now, why not click just down there, just down there. I'm not suggesting you go straight in, but hats off to you if you do. But something to bear in mind for next time. See you then.